getting ready to fertilize my asparagus and a little bit of information about asparagus fertilizer if you look online if you google how much fertilizer should i give asparagus it'll say between one and one and a half pounds per 100 square feet a square 100 square feet is like 10 foot by 10 foot if you're like me and you grow asparagus and raise beds, you got to figure out how much that comes down to for the square feet that you have. So I figured I'd show you a quick way to do this, but first let's go over fertilizer. The reason why they give a range of one to one and a half pounds per 100 square feet isn't because it's just up to you to decide. It's dependent on what fertilizer you use. Asparagus requires a general purpose fertilizer, which would be like triple six, triple ten, triple fifteen, that sort of thing. So the way that I've always done it, and it works really well, and I've been growing asparagus way before COVID, so I'm not one of these people who just started gardening because of COVID. I've got years of experience, is that anything below triple ten, I go to the one and a half pound, the high end of it. Anything above triple 10, like 12, 12, 12, or 15, 15, 15, I go to the lower end of the scale, which is only one pound per 100 square feet. So let's take my raised bed. It is three feet by eight feet, or which is only 24 square feet. And now I need to convert one and a half pounds because I'm using triple 10 fertilizer. I'm going to use one and a half pounds because it's triple 10 or lower on the scale. And so I got to convert that over. So what you do, easier if I just round it up to 25, because 25 goes into 100 four times, right? Right. So we'll just round it up to 25. One foot ain't going to make a difference. I got to get this on so you can see what I'm doing here. So we're going to take, if we use 1.5 pounds of fertilizer, I enter 1.5 on the calculator. I want to multiply that by 0.25, which is a quarter of a pound, or a quarter of what 25 feet in a 100 is, 100 square feet. That's going to give me 0.375. If I do that again, 1.5 times 0.25 gives me 0.375. Easier to work with decimals. All right. So now we have to convert one and a half, or actually we have to convert one pound into ounces. One pound is 16 ounces. Got to remember that 0.375. So we're going to take 16 ounces times 0.375 means that I need six ounces of fertilizer in my three by eight bed. On my scale here, I'm going to put an empty bowl on it because that's going to hold my fertilizer. I want the scale to zero to that. So now the scale is on. Hopefully you can see it says zero, zero, zero. It does say that we're in ounces. I need six ounces. This is my triple 10 fertilizer. I need six ounces of this. So six ounces is what I need. Six ounces really isn't a whole lot, I'm going to be honest with you. And really, one and a half pounds isn't a whole lot. Matter of fact, one and a half pounds by volume is 15 ounces. This 15 ounce container right here is 1.6 pounds. So if you got a 15 ounce butter container, 0.375 is about a third of this there we go now we're at six ounces so now that i've got it measured out correctly this is how much i got to spread around inside my 24 square foot garden and let's go out there and get that done and i'm going to go ahead and talk to you while we're on our way out here one thing that you don't want to do you don't want to over fertilize your garden because if you apply too much fertilizer, your plants are going to die. The other thing is, I'm doing this about four weeks before my asparagus normally comes up, which normally comes up about the first to the middle of April, 
So I want to give this some time to start working because the fertilizer has to be in ground contact for it to work. Now, I'm going to spin you around and let you see what my asparagus bed looks like. This is my asparagus bed. I put a bunch of material on top of it at the start of winter to kind of help insulate it. But now I got this, it's just a little teeny tiny bit. It's not even a third full. I don't know if you can see the sun shining in there, but you can kind of see it's not too far. If it was evened out, let's see what it looks like. Well, it's going to be about too hard for me to do out here. But if it was evened out, it's maybe about a third full. Can you see that? Hold on. Yeah, you can kind of see it there. It's not even a third of the way full. This bed has to hold this. Now, sometimes that can be a little bit difficult because this isn't a whole lot. You got to figure out how to make this little bit fill this whole great big bed up. And the way that I do it, I basically just shake it back and forth like this. I try to make sure I get a little bit everywhere. And usually the parts that lack are the edges. So I do the center and then I just walk around the edges. But just putting this on here isn't good enough. The next thing that we need to do, so we've got it all on there now. So the next thing you need to do is there's two options. You can either take your fingers and work it into the ground like this, kind of gently. But if you know anything about raised beds, you know I just filled this up last year. Look at it. It's already down six inches. Maybe eight inches. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go get some bag soil, dump right over top of this. That bag soil is also going to work with that fertilizer I just stuck in there to help it break down. And also it's going to help this other stuff that's in here, this brown biomass material to break down too. So that's kind of the way I do it. Let me go get them soil bags and start on that. I'm not going to make you watch me do all of this because I'm sure if I put one bag on, you're going to realize what I'm doing. I'm basically just going to dump this soil right on top of what is already in here. Then when I get it all in here, I'll take it and spread it out. Now this soil here is actually bought about two years ago. It's been sitting on a pallet up there, somewhat off the ground, but we just had a whole bunch of rain. So it's good and broke down. All right, so once you got the soil in there, the next part is to level it out. Break up any big clumps. You see any grubs in there? Yank them out. This soil still had roots in it, even though it was up off the ground. Trees still found their way. Probably not. 
probably not necessary to actually pull the roots out. They'll decay. They're not still alive. And there we go. Now we're fertilized. We got soil in there. You notice I kind of left the edges build up a little bit because those edges always seem to sink down every year because of the heat where it heats up. So that's how I do it. Would you hush up over there? Yes, I'm talking to you. One last thing I do is I apply azomite and rake it in. Now we are done. So if you've been following my YouTube channel for years now, I started using azomite in 2015. I like to refer to it as cocaine for plants. If you got plants that are struggling, get you some azomite, put it on. You can't put too much. Um, I did about a pound in this bed right here. You can um, pre-soak your holes before you plant plants with azomite you can take it and apply it to the roots before you plant your plants you can apply it in existing beds the way i just did you can apply it in plant rows you can apply it in your whole entire garden you literally can't apply too much azomite is basically macronutrients for plants so everybody knows about mpk because they put mpk fertilizer on their gardens all the time but just like human bodies Humans will f survive on fats, carbs, and protein, but you also got to have macronutrients. Macronutrients is things like magnesium, potassium, that sort of, or, uh, not potassium. <laughs> you kind of get what I'm going at, though. Macronutrients is everything except for the carbs, fats, and proteins. On humans, plants also have macronutrients, and hardly none of the fertilizers, fertilizers include it and soils can get depleted of macronutrients just like they can mpk so i found out especially i first started using it when i did my 70 fruit trees man they just really they grew healthy they had less pest and disease better disease resistance they've done great so i started using it in my garden all my berries i buy Let's see, I buy 30 pounds every other year. Now I've got a huge garden, 70 fruit trees, gobs of berries, and 30 pounds will last me about two years. So get you a bag of it. I buy it in a 30 pound bag from Amazon. I'll leave a link down in the description. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. God bless you. God bless your families. 
God bless your homestead.